Okay, so in our last video, I talked about that leaked iPhone 15 Pro CAD model. And not only do we now finally have our own concept based on the CAD model, uh, but we've also made a few discoveries while making the concept. And on top of that, the remaining three CAD models have also been leaked. Uh, and uh, yeah, this video is gonna be <laughs> quite interesting. So first things first, we've discovered a few interesting things while we were making our concept based on that CAD model. So when we modeled that more rounded frame, we've realized that it won't actually be as rounded as we initially expected it to be. And don't get me wrong, it will still feel more comfortable in your hands compared to the 14 lineup, but it won't be a gigantic upgrade in terms of comfortability uh, as some of you might have expected. Now, the screen is actually curved, more specifically the black bezel to blend in with that curved frame, but it's not gonna be as curved as the Apple Watch's display like we've seen in some of the rumors. Now, in terms of the actual bezels, these will indeed be thinner, about half the thickness of the ones on the 14 Pro, which is great but the frame actually comes closer to the screen as it is more rounded now. So if you look at the iPhone 15 Pro from a top-down view, you'll see that the black bezel would indeed be thinner, but the frame itself would actually be thicker. So you shouldn't really expect to see any noticeable increase in terms of the screen area in this case. But I would say that our biggest discovery was when it came to the buttons. So we know that the buttons will not be physical anymore. They will be, you know, static, non-moving buttons, but with haptic feedback. And the reason for Apple doing this is that they should be more durable that way, since, you know, there's not gonna be any moving parts. Um, and the phone would also be more water sealed for a potentially better water resistance. On top of that, uh, we're also expecting to see two extra haptic motors for a total of three, uh, which would work just like on, uh, you know, the MacBook's trackpad. Essentially, you would press these buttons, they wouldn't really move, but they would give you a haptic response, tricking your brain that they actually moved. Now, taking a look at the CAD models, as some of you might remember, they didn't actually have any inserts for the buttons at all. Instead, they only had these gaps uh, with these tiny holes in them. So we then had a look at some disassembled iPhone buttons to see how they look from the inside. And as you can see, they all have a couple of pins, more specifically two pins, which would fit right into those holes. And that's when we've noticed something really interesting, that the volume buttons on the iPhone 14 Pro, for example, uh, they have two holes each for a total of four. But if you take a look at a CAD model on the iPhone 15 Pro, there are only two holes in total. So because of this, we think that the volume buttons could actually be unified into a single large button, which in a way would actually make it easier for Apple to just do the haptics, one large button, instead of having two smaller ones. In fact, most Android manufacturers already do it this way. Now, something else that we've noticed is that the mute switch has two pins as well on the iPhone 14 Pro, but these look very different compared to the other pins. But if you take a look at the CAD model of the iPhone 15 Pro, those pins actually match the holes on the other buttons, which means that it is extremely likely that this new mute switch would look and function in a very different way compared to what uh, we've had up until now. One that you would press once to activate mute and then again to deactivate it. And then we also think that it will likely have different haptic feedbacks based on your phone being on silent or not. Now, aside from this, like I said before, uh, we've also had the other three remaining CAD models leaked. So if you take a look at the iPhone 15 CAD, you can see that it has the same rounded frame as the iPhone 15 Pro, which is great. There were some rumors that they might have slightly different designs, but that does no longer seem to be the case. Same unified design on all models. We can also see the dynamic island, which is something that was previously rumored to come to the non-pro models of the iPhone 15. Of course, USB Type-C is also coming, but I would say that the biggest change here is that uh, the iPhone 15 is also taller noticeably than both the iPhone 14 and the iPhone 15 Pro. In fact, this is apparently now a 6.2 inch display rather than a 6.1 inch, which is a very interesting choice. Honestly, it's really hard to believe that the non-pro model would have a larger display than the standard iPhone 15 Pro. So this is what I think actually happened. If you take a look at the iPhone 14, Apple uh, claims that it's a 6.1 inch display, but in fact, it's 6.06 inches. The iPhone 14 Pro is also marketed as having a 6.1 inch display, but this one, because of the dynamic islands, which occupies less space, has a 6.12 inch display, so a tiny bit larger. So if anything, I'm guessing that these thinner bezels might actually push it to something like a 6.16 inch display. And I don't know, maybe Apple's just approximating that to 6.2, which I think would also apply to the iPhone 15 Pro's marketing as well. I just don't see them having different screen sizes. And of course, being a non-pro model also means that it lacks the triple lens camera 
camera module that we see on the 15 Pro's CAD. We only have a dual camera module, which is significantly thinner than on the iPhone 15 Pro. Now, I would say that probably the most interesting thing with the iPhone 15 CAD is that the buttons are just like on the iPhone 14 and not the iPhone 15 Pro, which means that we get the same style mute button and you can see that the volume buttons are also separate with two connectors for each. Not only that, but according to a lot of rumors, only the iPhone 15 Pros would switch to the haptic buttons, which we can actually see from this CAD model. Oh, and an actual photo allegedly showing the iPhone 15 was shared by UnknownZ21. Uh, he was the person who shared a photo of the iPhone 15 Pro's frame before that showed the USB Type-C port and the titanium finish. Well, now he's back with a photo of the iPhone 15. So here we can see the more covered body, which actually looks very, very nice. The bezels don't seem to be as thin as on the 15 Pro. Uh, maybe that would be a differentiator between the two. He also shared the iPhone 15 frames photo, which looks uh, more like an aluminum finish compared to the titanium finish that he shared for the iPhone 15 Pro. So uh, those look quite um, believable, I would say. And then we also have the iPhone 15 Plus CAD. This was shared by 9to5Mac. And long story short, this is just a larger iPhone 15. The only difference is that we know the dimensions for this iPhone. And essentially, it is getting taller by 0.03 millimeters, narrower by 0.31, and thicker by 0.02. Again, we can see that a bezel is a tiny bit thinner, and not as thin as the iPhone 15 Pro, but as you can tell, the body actually curves a bit more in. And then, of course, we also have the iPhone 15 Pro Max slash the iPhone 15 Ultra. We don't really know how this will actually be called in the end. Uh, and this was shared by Ice Universe. And there are a couple of very interesting changes here. So uh, the phone is getting noticeably thicker by 0.4 millimeters. But I would say the weirdest thing is that the camera module is actually getting thinner compared to the iPhone 15 Pro. Not only that, but the lenses also look different and uh, the camera bump itself is a bit smoother than on the iPhone 15 Pro, which is very strange. Now, this could of course be because of that uh, periscope camera module, which could also explain the phone getting thicker as well. But if anything, I was expecting the camera bump to be thicker on the 15 Pro Max rather than thinner when compared to the standard 15 Pro. So that is indeed quite strange, but I do have some awesome news here. So uh, the phone is getting noticeably narrower, and that's something that I've been complaining about since the iPhone 12 Pro Max, the fact that it was just so wide and also so sharp, so it was very uncomfortable to use, at least for me. Well, apparently the 15 Pro Max is getting narrower by 0.87 millimeters, which should be very noticeable when you're using it. Of course, combined with that rounded frame, it should make it way better to use in the hand. Dice Universe then went to confirm some more details, such as the bezel getting narrower, uh, the body getting thicker, the frame being made out of titanium instead of stainless steel, USB Type-C of course, and no physical buttons. And then we have to talk about the colors because 9to5Mac uh, got some actual colors from an unnamed source. More specifically, the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max would allegedly come in this dark red color, which is similar to burgundy. Um, they've also provided the hex code, so you can actually look up the exact color. And they also did some renders, and uh, <laughs> I really love the way this looks. Of course, the renders still use the iPhone 14 Pro shape, so that's not up to date, but in terms of the actual color, this looks really, really nice and professional. They've also got the colors for the standard iPhone 15s, and here we have a dark pink and a light blue as the new colors, I'm assuming. Uh, and they've also provided the hex codes as well. Uh, the pink looks maybe a bit too vibrant, definitely not for me, but I do love the blue. It kind of reminds me of the old iPod Touch blue, so I absolutely love the look of that. But of course, that there's a ton of other leaks to cover, which we're going to cover in the next video, so definitely stay tuned and subscribe to the channel to see that as soon as it comes out. If you're looking to get a new iPhone right now, you can press the YouTube trouble cards down below for some great deals. And yeah, this has been pretty much it for this one. I'm Daniel, this means Zenoftech, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Zenoftech, signing out. Cheers.